Good afternoon, respected chairman, sir, and members of the house. I will be talking to you, uh, giving you an overview on chemtosecond lasers in press biopic correction. Came the advent of the femtosecond laser in refractive surgery. Oh, sorry, I was supposed to introduce myself. <laughs> uh, I'm from New Delhi, and uh, I'm the cornea and refractive surgery consultant in a joint practice shop by center in New Delhi. I grew up in Bombay, did my MS in Bombay, then went on to Shankar Netralia in Chennai, did my cornea fellowship. Then I was at Mass Ionia in Swamari, did a fellowship there, and then now I'm married and in New Delhi. I do cornea refractive surgery and keratoplasty, um, everything related to the cornea. Please doubt the cataract surgery now. So, came the advent of the femtosecond laser, and refractive surgery was never quite the same. Right from making flaps from simple LASIK to cap uh, buttons for keratoplasty to channels for ri uh, intracorneal ring channels for implants and going deeper down for cataract surgery, trabeculotomies and glaucoma, cutting anterior vitreous membranes today as investigation goes, 20 second lasers have come a long way and have invaded ophthalmology. Now, one very interesting application is its applications in press myopia. There was a saying when the Americas were found, it was a legend that there was this fountain of youth that whoever drank from the waters could turn back the clock a hundred years. And if we put that clock forward by 500 years, most of us past the age of 45, are also on some side sort of a quest, not the quest in the wild west, but here among anti-aging creams and myriads of pills and bottles and everything else. Why is this? Because today the demand for breast myopia is a lot more. Maybe less than 3% five years ago to more than 30% today in our practice. Now the goal of a breast biopic correction would be to improve near vision without loss of distance vision and an increase in the depth of field. But it's not so easy because patients can be difficult. Patients will need reading glasses more as they get older. They have to be counseled for that. And they may need another procedure down the road. Besides, one solution does not fit all. And the crucial factor for success would be the consistent targeting of refractive outcomes. Now the femtosecond laser, because of its accuracy, could provide this. The applications could be primary, as in the case of an intercore, or secondary, as doing flaps for other procedures. So what are the trends in breast biopia correction? Older patients who present for surgery who are tempted with spectacle independence should be, uh, we have a, a sort of uh, age scenario where we cut off. Above 60 years, whether there is a cataract or not, they should be counseled for an IOL procedure. Young patients, clear lenses, low hyperopia, low astigmatism, a cornea-based breast biopic correction. And the mid-range, 50 to about uh, 55, we counsel them for both. But what we have noticed in our practice is most of them opt for cornea procedures, Dr. Naharan, because they do think that it is less invasive. Now, the femtosecond laser is the scalpel supreme. Okay, you have pulses of energy which can be arranged it, to produce plasma which expands at supersonic velocity, spreads in the cornea to form the section planes, which could be horizontal, vertical, or oblique. And these can be used very efficiently for breast biopic correction. So you could have a cornea-based breast biopic correction with a femtosecond as a monovision, as a breast by a LASIK where the flaps are done, Supercore, intercore, which is actually the truly solely um, femtosecond procedure, and cornelian days, where you could have pockets or flaps. You also have the lens based breast biopia correction with the femtosecond as with femto cataract, and today what they call the FACO NACO um, disruption of the crystalline lens, which I will be talking to you later. So you have a whole variety of new lenses which are predictable and accurate. 
most of our forays were probably with the classical monovision LASIK, easy to explain to the patient, the patient was functional, but no wow factor. And of course, we could not perform this without a prior demonstration to the patient. So we had emetropia with breast biopia, and we're going to detail myopia with breast biopia, where the dominant eye was for distance. And you have the hyperopia with breast biopia, where the non-dominant eye overcorrected to a um, mild myopia. Then we had the breast biopia, LASIK, or breast biopia, femtocentral LASIK. Now all these procedures, the basic modalities, creating multifocality. The lasers gave them different names, they had different protocols, but in essentiality, it was the same principle. It was either creating a negative spherical aberration in the middle for reading, or creating a positive spherical aberration where you had your uh, dis uh, distance in the middle, in the, the read uh, distance in the middle. The results were good, but at the same time, we somehow never felt like going back because the patient somehow never seemed too attracted by it. Then we came to Supracore. Supracore is a kind of LASIK, flap with a femtosecond laser, exam laser ablation of the bed based on the intrachloric profile. Suitable for breast biopia and hyperopia up to two diameter. This treatment produced this far rehabilitation, intermediate and near. But one disadvantage is the far rehabilitation took a long time. And patients again did not seem to be too uh, keen on this. The non dominant eye was treated first. Of course, this turned out to be better than the next procedure I'm going to discuss, the all femto procedure, which is intracord. Here they were less glared and less halos. In the intracord, it was an interstomal treatment of breast biopia done by the Victus Femto Second, Washington, originally developed by Luke Louise. Now, here there are five concentric rings created of different depth in a 1.9 diameter was 3.2. But this is one procedure, we've done a lot of breast biopic correction. This is one procedure which, whose principle uh, we personally didn't uh, agree to. Because anything, it was totally corneal within, within the cornea. And this relied too much on too many variables. Intraocular pressure, the uh, elasticity of the cornea, and the biomechanical healing of the cornea. And even where these rings should be played best with concentration has always been debatable, as you see in literature. So although this did uh, correct a little bit of negative spherical aberration and there was good reading, uh, this was very difficult to treat. And that is why this has not really caught up and been very popular. In addition, once you do it, you have to think of PRK or a lens-based modality to enhance. Because LASIK is not suitable, you could have intersection of the LASIK flaps with the interstromal rings and risk really uh, you know, severe irregular induced astigmatism. Another thing was the disabling glare and halos that you got in this procedure. So more reliable were the corneal inlays. Now we have a whole variety available. In the microlens system, you have the flexi U and the raindrop or view plus. The view plus is uh, semi-permeable to allow glucose from the aqueous and oxygen from the tear film to enter into vital corneal cells and it drains away catabolic waste from the aqueous. This prevents scarring and this keeps a very healthy cornea. This is probably going to be the lens of the future. In the flexi view, it is the only uh, inlay which has an add-on power. Again, it has its own share of customers, not really caught on. But what has really caught on is the camera inlay. Okay, here I will show you a brief video of the uh, uh, camera inlay with LASIK, CLK. You have to take a much deeper pocket here, about 200 microns because it does tend to cause a little bit prolate cornea in it. And between the original flap and the new flap, if you've done had LASIK before, there should be a minimum of 100 micron. This is the Dr. Minor group, who I work with in the camera in there. It's well done absolutely like a regular LASIK flap. And then the camera is held with this 
special faucet and inserted in the middle over a marking on the cornea, central cornea, as you can see. It is done unilaterally in the non dominant eye. Of course, you could also have it with a microkeratome, and you could also have it with a pocket. Now, essentially, when you do it under a flap, they believe dryness to be uh, a very deterring cause post operatively. The pocket probably provides much better visual rehabilitation, there's less dryness, and we, uh, patients are a lot more valuable to that. Patients have to be informed about in the exchange to higher power as their accommodative amplitude further declines with time. And now, probably one of the most exciting uh, advents of femtosecond lasers for breast biopia, the photo destruction of the crystalline lens weakening of the lens fibers without touching the capsule. And this is believed to bring back the elasticity to the lens and to the capsule, which is supposed to be treating the basic uh, cause of uh, breast biopia, the loss of flexibility. Accuracy, this is a trial done in Minnesota, the accuracy and pre uh, re reproducibility of femtosecond laser permits the formation of incisions in multiple dimensions. Well, it was very promising in their results, but still far from the goal. So, breast biopia has been a source of vexation to cataract and refractive surgeons down the ages. But we as refractive surgeons should take the best, sleep out the worst, and proceed with level-headedness. That is going to be the 